I've been depressed for the past couple of months. Life has been hard for me, man. Recently, I'm having a lot of Nice try, dude. I, I, I that's the, that's what I used. Nah, shut the f up. I knew I was a troll. 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 Keep praying. What's up, my party rockers? So I was playing on my master's alt account to learn the new Reaper and Diva, but Blizzard was having none of that. I got placed in a Grandmaster rated game, so I knew I had to step it up with the big boss Zarya pocket pick. I'm Grandmaster Prey, and today I'm going to show you guys how you can carry games, even in Grandmaster, by knowing how to effectively tell if your team is at an advantage and disadvantage, and what you can do as a result of that. We're going to be seeing this from the eyes of Zarya, but you can apply this to any situation as callouts are universal. Before we grab right in, make sure to check out GameLeap.com for guides made by top 500 professionals tailored to make you climb rapidly. So let's go ahead and see what happens this game. Now the first thing I want to really iterate to you guys is that Reinhardt Zarya on Hanamura, both attack and defense is really good. And as Zarya, your first priority here is going to be bubbling your Reinhardt at the right time so he has space to swing. Here I tell Reinhardt to go ahead and swing because I bubbled him so he can get that cleave damage off. And so after that cleave damage I go ahead and bubble myself in front of him and because of that I already have 80 charge. And that's one very very important mechanic on Zarya that'll get you 80 charge like 90% of the time. You go ahead, tell your Reinhardt to swing, give him a little bit of reaction time to go ahead and process that information, then bubble him around half a second to a second later after you tell him to start swinging. And just like that, you've basically completed three things for your team with that combo. So one, you gave Reinhardt ability to start making space with cleave damage without being punished. Two, you went ahead and helped him get shatter a lot faster. And three, you get energy, which means you'll get grab a lot faster and you'll be able to kill a lot faster. Now, we go ahead and lose this first point pretty, pretty hard. And spoiler alert, we lose the second point too, but here's what I could have done. Now... On the second point, we had a Winston Hammond combo. That means as Zarya, I won't be able to get a lot of peel. I won't be able to stand behind the shield here, and that's exactly why I died. Instead, the best course of action would have been to wait for the enemy to get on point because we have those two dive tanks that can dive their backline super, super easy. And so right there, they could have dived the Ana and the Ash right there. And as Zarya, what I could have done was go ahead and just play on point, play behind this wall right here, and just go ahead and just bubble as needed and just get that free damage off because I almost had grab here. I could have turned this around, but I went ahead and got picked off, so that just wasn't an option. And I do go ahead and grab here. We don't get a lot. We get the Lucio, but then Reinhardt counters it with a shatter, and he's uncontested in that shatter because bubble was just shoes, Winston died, and so there's really nothing that can block that shatter. So we go ahead and just lose point here. Now, in all fairness, that was pretty embarrassing. But let's go ahead and see what we do on the next round to turn this around. So here on attacking side, the call was made to go ahead and group right. So I'm going to do that same mechanic on Zarya that I was talking about earlier where I bubble and then I instantly go right in front of them. So just like that, I go ahead and get 80 charge again. So we're already at an advantage. Now, one extremely important thing that I do uh, throughout this game is call to my Reinhardt when I have bubble. And the cooldown of the bubble. Now this is very, very important. I recommend you guys try it no matter what rank you're in. Because you're going to be able to coordinate that front line to be an absolute monster. And when the front line has really good communication, they're not going to let anything through. So pushing the second point, the call was made to go top right. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And I'm going to save my bubble for the fire strike. And because of that, I get that free, I get free energy. I go ahead and bubble the Reinhardt so he can go ahead and swing and I get 100 charge right here. So already we're at a huge advantage, so we go ahead and back up because I don't have bubble, and then I make the call to go ahead and push that Ash off of high ground so he can, so she can't go for any like cheeky picks or anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop down here, and we've essentially forced them on this uh, narrow like corner, which is amazing for us, especially because they're about to lose their main tank here. And because they lost their main tank here, I go ahead and grab here because I know that if I grab, I'm gonna get a lot because they're all right there. Because of this is two CP, we don't get cocky. We still have max charge, so I'm just gonna go ahead and dodge and weave this Ash and just uh, focus targets at this point. So we're focusing uh, Reinhardt here, and because Reinhardt's gonna be their main front line here and deciding how they're gonna win this. And so we go ahead and switch over to Lucio, she because he, he's out of position. And I still have that high charge, so I'm using it to my advantage and just really, really putting down that fire. Because of that, we go ahead and win this point with more time than they did. 
So here we have the second point of attack here. So we go ahead and make that same call to go on the right here. And when you're playing Ghost, make sure to go ahead and coordinate with your D.Va and say that you want to eat that fire strike so you can get that charge. Otherwise, something like this is going to happen. Fire strike me, bitch! Oh. Now, really looking into this, we now know that they have a Mei. So we're going to go ahead and let that Reinhardt die, but we're already half charge. And I know right here I can play aggressive because Mei just shoots wall and I'm about to project the barrier. So I go ahead and use my barrier, get that little extra charge, and then right here, Ryan goes out of position. So D.Va goes ahead and keeps him out of position, and we pick him off. Now, because they don't have a front line, all we need to worry about is their wall. Now, as long as we go in as a group, that wall's not going to do anything to us because they don't have their front line anymore. So essentially, they're forced to go ahead and back up and regroup. But we're not going to let them recontest here. We are high charge. We have all our cooldowns. So we're going to go ahead and just prevent them from recontesting. Try to get some extra picks here. And Reinhardt's on the same page, I go ahead and tell him to help me here. And because of that, we get a free point, we got 100 charge, and we almost have grav. And all of this was able to be set up for me, because we decided to play aggressive here when they were down at a disadvantage. And always make sure to understand when the enemy's at a disadvantage. So... Reinhardt gets walled here again, but I have Graviton. But the reason I'm not going to use it is because I looked at my team and I wanted to combo it with Diva Bomb. But the problem is Diva didn't have her bomb yet, so I'm not going to go ahead and waste Grav here because I know using the Grav will be a waste, especially because they're using all their ults. We're getting picked off. So one very, very important skill in carrying, especially if you're playing somebody with a very high impact ult, is to generally understand whether or not your ultimate is going to be able to be followed up on as well as as well as knowing what your ultimate is going to do for your team in that fight so now we're going to go ahead and try to grab bomb here now the diva bomb was a little late i don't know what was what was going on there so we go ahead and get nothing as a result but the good thing here is that reinhardt has shatter now or he's very close to shatter so we're going to go ahead and get that pick and go straight down the point so when you're attacking in a 2 CP situation like this, you want to go ahead and do a couple things. Your first priority is going to be to keep your main tank alive because your main tank is going to be your front line. And if you lose that front line, there's going to be a lot of trouble. So here, it's a little bit Monka S, but we get that clutch bubble in to a Zenyatta trans. And this is really good because we got their main healer. Nano was wasted on the Reinhardt and their Reinhardt is out of position. That's their main tank. So they're all open to getting killed by literally anything. And so we're basically juggling around that Reinhardt so he can't do anything, while at the same time making sure that our Reinhardt doesn't die because that's gonna be Zarya's main priority. So whenever he gets anteed, save the, save the bubble for whenever Reinhardt gets anteed because it cleanses that ante. And that's gonna be huge because when a Reinhardt gets anteed, it is bad news for your team. So I go ahead and get the best baby diva huge graviton but it doesn't matter we're still keeping we're gonna go ahead and focus people out of position especially if they're healers so first priority keeping reinhardt alive second priority focusing targets so you want to be really talking to your team telling who to focus here because otherwise you're never going to kill anything so here we're screaming to go for the diva so i go ahead and switch the baby diva now we're screaming to go for the hammond so we go for the Hammond. So Z Zenyatta is also able to understand who we're going on. So he discords the targets that we call out. And this is exactly why communication is vital in 2CP scenarios, especially. Because like I said, if you don't communicate who your team needs to all go on, and they're just going to get sustained up and they're going to be able to contest point forever. So here again, we're going to use that same early game cheese strategy where I bubbled the Reinhardt when he's about to get picked off or picked and get that free charge and then I go right in front of him. So already I have 80 charge, that's going to be huge, especially later on when Symmetra teleports behind us. Now I make the mistake here, I had projected barrier but I positioned myself in a way where I couldn't see the Reinhardt charging so he went ahead and died. Uh, so our front line's gone now but the good thing is they're positioning themselves in like clump in a clumped up space outside point in a narrow area. So we're able to take that to our advantage because we are high energy and just cleave damage them with the right click. So because of that, we're able to get so much damage off, a lot of ult charge off. And we're going to respect their boundaries here and wait for a regroup. Wait for our team to regroup here. Uh, and it's okay to give a point or two 
as long as you're going to regroup like this. So we go ahead and back off because my charge and my grab is going to be super important. So we can't die. Uh, we get right, Lucio right out of position. And we go ahead and get that grab off with the trans. So we go ahead and save that round because we survived with high charge. So going along to the next fight here, we know because Reinhardt was able to just put so much cleave damage in the enemy Reinhardt, we know he has shatter. So we're going to play around that, especially when we pause right here. Their Brigida is positioned in a way where the only reason she'd be moving up like that is if she wanted to shatter. So we're going to keep our bubbles until he goes ahead and shatters and bait it out. And so because we did that, we go ahead bait that right out get in front of him and now we're max charge reinhardt's in a bad position he wasted shatter uh even though our reinhardt died here we almost have graviton surge and so we're gonna play super super aggressive here because they're clumped up without a main tank so when we get that graviton it's gonna be huge and notice this mechanic that i do as zarya the right click melee combo that's gonna be that's gonna be your bread and butter in a uh grav situation like that your standard graviton cleave damage here because when you right click there's a bit of an animation before you can right click again so when you put that melee in between your right clicks you're losing nothing for extra damage now here's where i made a massive mistake now right here reinhardt gets a fat shatter and so we go ahead and take this and this is good but they have a junk rat but we're contesting them in a narrow corridor and because of that me and Brigida go ahead and pay that price and get destroyed, absolutely demolished by that Junkrat. And because they have that spawn advantage, they're going to be able to regroup before I could even get there. So essentially, because of that, we lost the point because we went a little too ham. So if the enemy has something that has a lot of like splash damage, like a Pharah or a Junkrat, don't contest them in their corridors, no matter what. So upon going on the top left here, we see that they're in, that they're main. So we're gonna go ahead and drop down and just lay down that fire so we can get grab here. And we don't need to go for anything crazy. Just wait for any mistakes. Like right here, we get that fair that's anteed, and she's out of position. So our Reinhardt goes down here. I actually told him to go down here and charge in, which was a very stupid call. But nevertheless. Um, our Ana gets a massive anti, and because of that, I follow it up with a grav, and we go ahead and wipe them again. So because we have high charge, we're going to go ahead and play a little aggressive here. Not too aggressive because they do have that Junkrat, but just enough to get some damage off on them. So we're going to keep playing main here, absorbing that uh, Junkrat Farah damage, which is huge for Zarya. Absolutely huge. Because Junkrat and Farah, they're slow projectiles that take time to reach the target, and so you'll be able to actually react to it and get some free energy from their shots when they just shoot it down. And so you might be asking the reason why I'm down here while the tanks are up here. And that's because I have barrier and at the same time, I can see who needs barrier up on the top there. Uh, so our Reinhardt tries to get a uh, cheeky backline shatter. It doesn't work out, but we're able to salvage it because I got nanoed here and Right here, I knew that the Reinhardt had Shatter because he hasn't used it in a while. It's just basically the easiest, easiest way to tell, so I go ahead and predict it with that bubble. Going on to the next fight here, I have Graviton again, but we're going to try to do something cheeky here. We're going to try to go ahead and grab them from behind where they won't expect it. But unfortunately for me, um, the call was made that they're going to the top left up on that high ground, so I'm now in a bad position. So we try to get, we try to go there as fast as we can, um, but I messed up my bubble here, and because of that, Reinhardt's really unable to cleave here, and I dropped down because they use trans, and our Reinhardt was low. So I made the call to go ahead and dive that uh, Widowmaker. I call her out, and the problem there again was I should have been bubbling the Reinhardt, but it's all right. We end up carrying here anyways, and here's why: we're just trying to survive here, getting them away, especially the Zarya. We're trying to get the Zarya away from the enemy team and to focus us. And I know if Zarya Zarya knows here, if she drops down, she's gonna be in a really bad disadvantage to try to pick me off. And so we take that to our advantage, and we go ahead and get the clutch return and bubble the Reinhardt because we were all the way like in the back preventing them from actually contesting point and just dodging and weaving we're able to actually stall this out so 
because we have Hammond, I go ahead and stall to Roadhog because I know, even though I'm slow, I can go ahead and get some free picks off. And that's exactly what I do with Lucio. Now, this is a massive pick because they're not going to have any healing anymore. And so, they're just staggered. They're just hella staggered here. And because of that, we go ahead and get that easy victory royale. No, I'm joking. We get that win. And just like that, we were able to carry a Grandmaster game with gold limbs, gold damage, gold objective kills, all of that good stuff. As well as getting that fat play of the game. If you want to start carrying games like I do here, make sure to check out GameLeap.com for hundreds of pro guides on any hero you want to master. Thanks for watching guys, like and subscribe if you enjoyed and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out.